CataractCoach.com. The main incision ripped. Now what do you do? What's your approach to completing this cataract surgery with that ripped incision? It's going to leak a lot. Let me show you the incision here. So making the main incision here, it looks like a good incision, single plane, entering the eye. Looks pretty reasonable. Now, cystotome starting the capsorexis. You can see it's been stained with tripan blue dye. Obviously, it's a nice real cataract, a white cataract here. And getting that rexus complete. So still, the incision looks fine. No main issues there. A little more viscoelastic going inside the eye. Now with the forceps. And now you have, uh, look at that capsule. It has a tendency to want to run out on you. So doing a little bit of a little maneuver there to bring it in. And now maybe a double rexus technique here. So aspirate some lens material here, decompress the caps or bag. That looks good. Now we can continue and make the rex bigger now that you've taken the pr pressure out of the caps or bag. Notice that with a bimanual, able to go in and remove a lot of the liquefied lens cortex. So now going back inside the eye, here's the phaco probe to just see if you can remove some of that lens material. Definitely going to want to open up this rex to make it a little bit larger once you get this uh, nucleus depressurized. So here, more viscoelastic going inside the eye. And now going in with a blade to start nicking the capsule to increase the size of the rexus and inadvertent tear of the incision with that blade. Wow, so there's a tear there now. So cystome is probably a better choice. Now that's being done here through the side port. And now that cystome can be uh, used to start that tear and now the forceps can be used to complete it. But now what do you do? That MVR blade inadvertently ripped or tore that phaco incision. Do you still use it? And you gotta be really cautious because it's gonna upset all the fluidics of the eye. So I agree here with our guest surgeon, better part of judgment is to avoid using that incision. So suturing it up here. So 10 nylon being used to suture that incision and repair that laceration. Just be warned, it may need more than just that one mattress suture. You may need to put a couple of radial sutures in too. Now that big motion was moving the scope over and now making a new entry into the eye. So now there's a new phaco incision to the right of the ripped one and a new paracentesis to the left of it. Now at this point, let's just speed up here. The nucleus can be removed. You've restored the fluidic balance in the eye. There's still a little leakage if you look carefully from that ripped incision where that suture is. But I definitely like the idea of abandoning the ripped incision and making a new one. And I've showed you that in the past here on Cataract Coach with some resident videos. Abandon the bad incision. Don't stick with it. It's going to cause more harm than good. And you can always make a second incision elsewhere, move the scope over. If you're temporal, sit superior, etc. And now cleaning up here, all looks pretty good. A little bit of cortex remaining, that can be removed pretty easily. So a little bit of uh, irrigation aspiration here again on the bimanual technique. And again, you're watching that incision to make sure it doesn't leak. If it leaks, the problem is you upset fluidic balance. Remember, there's only one source of fluid inflow into the eye, and that is the BSS bottle or BSS bag. There's two sources of fluid outflow, typically. One is leakage through your incisions, and two is what you aspirate on the phaco probe. Here, we have a third spot, which is the abandoned incision is also leaking. So you have to keep in mind the fluidic balance of the eye. So let's look at the end here. Sealing up the incision, the second incision is okay. The other paracentesis looks fine, but now let's go back and look at that the first incision that ripped, and let's see what we can do there. A little bit of stromal hydration, and it's probably still going to leak, so you're probably going to need some more sutures. I'd try to put some radial ones in. Intracameral myocall going in, that's reasonable. Still some leakage through that torn incision, so it may need more in uh, sutures to seal it up. You definitely want to have it absolutely watertight when you're on the OR table here. So now the surgeon is moving the scope around, sitting there temporarily again, and making sure you can get a nice, absolutely sealed incision there from the original leaky one. And here, another suture going in. And these sutures, you may have to leave in for a prolonged period of time. Don't think that you're going to remove them after a week. You may have to leave these in the eye for a month, two months, or even longer. You just got to take it day by day and see how the patient does. But very nice suturing technique here. Looks pretty astigmatically neutral. And again, that's really helping to repair that. Burying the knot is an important consideration. And I'm happy to say this patient had a really nice outcome in terms of refractive state, as well as healing of this. Just be patient. Remember, avascular tissue like the cornea takes a lot longer to heal up than a vascular tissue. So to give those uh, sutures months to really help heal up. Some antibiotics here at the end, subconscious. Here's the refractive result. Beautiful. 
from going from a white cataract to 6.9 or 20-30 visual acuity, that is great. Thanks for sending the video in.